Hey, I'm David Liggett with Data Center Hawk. This is Hawk Talk 32, and I'm with John Day with Savvy Data Centers, and we're talking about the data center industry. Next. Hey, I'm David Liggett with Data Center Hawk. Focus on cloud and location, data center industry trends, the dynamic market. Hey, I'm David Liggett with Data Center Hawk, and I'm sitting here in Ashburn, Virginia with Savvy Data Centers uh, with John Day. John's Vice President of Sales and Leasing. And John, thanks for hosting us today. We're really excited to be here. Absolutely. This is Hawk Talk 32. And so we're going to dive in and talk about uh, the data center industry, Northern Virginia, what data center users are doing. Uh, John, before we do, for those that, that don't know, talk about your background in the industry and, um, and the different roles that you've had and, and when you end, ended up here at Savvy. Sure. So I've uh, been in and around the data center business really since it began as yeah. its own standalone industry in the late 90s or early 2000s. Like, like a lot of people I'm sure you've talked to, I was at Exodus Communications okay. for a while. I didn't know that. Interesting. Uh, and stayed on through the cable and wireless period for uh, a year or two. And then I took what was, I guess, kind of a detour. I was uh, a mergers and acquisitions investment banker for a couple of years, focused on TMT businesses. So. There were some data center transactions sure. we worked on in there, um, some cable systems, some telecom uh, transactions as well. And then uh, I was recruited out of uh, my investment banking job by one of our investment banking clients who had taken over a business that, uh, software business to okay. manage mission critical power distribution yeah. systems. Sure. You know, the data center industry just taking off, it was a natural market. So did that for a few years that led me eventually to working for ABB Okay. A Swiss power and automation company. Yeah. And um, selling software and support into the data center market still. Okay. And then uh, finally, in about 2014, I switched back over to the data center owner okay, operator cool. space yeah. again. And then um, just joined Sabi about 60 days ago, actually. Well, very exciting. And you've joined Sabi in the biggest data center market in the world, Northern Virginia. Right. Uh, which you obviously have, uh, you know, have been here a long time. But talk about this market uh, and how you've seen it grow. I mean, you've you've seen uh, enterprise users, data center users here. You've seen large hyperscale cloud service providers take down large footprints here. Why is this market so attractive for those different types of data center users? Sure. No, it's you know, and and I mean, it's no no news to anybody watching this, right? That that the market has changed dramatically here and grown like crazy. I mean, I remember. You know, data centers in 2012, 2013, you know, uh, an eight megawatt data center was was not a bad sized data center, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. now it's a data hall in, yeah, uh, in sure. these mega yeah. data centers that are going up here. And I think, you know, it's really about the concentration of fiber, right? I, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what really drives growth here over other places uh, on the East Coast. Uh, all the fiber that was present here going clear back to the, you know, to the WorldCom days. Yeah, sure. Um, and I, that's that's why we picked this parcel of land because of its strategic location within, you know, uh, there's there's really no bad place to be in Ashburn sure. in terms of connectivity, but we like this parcel of land specifically uh, because of how it's arranged along some of the key fiber routes here in Ashburn. Yeah, and when you think about the Savvy offering, and you know, what are some key differentiators from your perspective that? that make what you're doing, um, you know, not just on the campus, but from a people side of things, from an operational side of things. Well, what makes, um, you know, this brand and offering uh, different from others in the market? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, you touched on something that, that we think is really critical, right? Because if, if somebody's just looking for mission critical space, power, yeah. cooling, and security, um, they're this is the biggest market in the world, sure. right? So yeah, a lot are, of people have plenty yeah. of yeah. options, right? Uh, any any major market, there's going to be five, six, ten different players that can offer that. So, what do you do beyond the building? What what can you offer to a customer beyond the building? And you know, we spent, um, and again, I've only been here a short time, but you know, the team before I got here and since I got here, we've been spending a lot of time trying to figure out what do we offer beyond the building. Mm -hmm. um, and the best people to talk to are Savvy customers, right? Sure. You know, why, so we've been asking people, why did you choose Savvy out of all the other options that you've got mm -hmm. in the market? Um, and you know, it comes down to some some pretty basic things. One is um, you know, the feedback we got is that people don't customers don't feel like just a number at Savvy. Huh. They're not customer one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, you know, some of these some of these large data center owner operators have thousands, maybe I don't know, even into tens of thousands of customers. When you think about the folks that, that do a lot of retail, um, and so the folks, the, the the customers who choose to work with Savvy, 
Um, they like the fact that uh, you know it's a, uh, a select group, a selective group of customers that have chosen to come here. Um, we've still got all the you know financial resources of one of the largest data, privately held data center companies in the in the market. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for, for almost four million square feet of data center space. Uh, so we've got all those resources we can bring to bear, but you've got a company that's got uh, employees that have long tenure, low turnover. So a real collaborative um, uh, environment yeah. develops where you know, people know who's going to be pro sure. providing the remote hand services in the data center. They know, uh, you know, they, they know who answers the phone when they sure. call to open a ticket, that yeah. sort of thing. So, um, so I think that's one of the appealing things, yeah. right? Um, and we try to focus on that. We yeah. want to try to highlight that. Uh, also, I think you know flexibility. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, by you know, there's a lot of people you know who that are going to use that term, and, and they should. I think for us, what it really means is, you know, as a again as a large privately held company, um, we don't we don't have too many vo too many voices we need to answer to, sure. right? Um, so we don't have some of the pressures that the publicly traded companies have to deal with. Um, so uh, when it comes to build out the data center, we could be really flexible. We've got just a few things that we like to, uh, you know, that, that we that we don't stray from in terms yeah. of slab floor design and and, and uh, hot aisle containment. But other than that, we can be really flexible, and and not just in terms of the the technology, but also. Um, you know, planning for expansion and, and leaving people enough contiguous space and, and developing that relationship of trust where we know they're going to grow into yeah. the space at a certain time. Everybody's going to offer rofers and rofos, but, you know, we, we like to think that we kind of go beyond that. Um, and that then sort of bleeds into, you know, another area of flexibility uh, is, is just deal structure, yeah. right? And legal terms and conditions, you know, economics, um, what can we do there? How can we be flexible? Again, we don't have the quarter to quarter pressure um, that, that other folks have. Um, we also don't have the bureaucracy, right? We're, you know, as, as, a, as a more lean operation, um, I sit 20 feet away from the president of the company here in Ashburn. And so, you know, a, a prospective customer or an existing customer has something that they want to try to do, uh, you know, a problem on their end that they want to help us work through with them. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's not 14 layers of bureaucracy. It's 20 feet. I walk 20 yeah, feet down the hallway great. and and grab the president and say, "What can we do to try to make this work for everybody?" Yeah, no, that's good. You know, it's one of the things that we've, uh, you know, I've at least seen over the last several years from a, a you know user. It seems like the data center user is placing more and more value on the people behind what's happening mm -hmm. uh, at the data center oper operator level, as well as the operational side of a, a data center providers uh, company. Uh, so, you know, naturally, I think we've seen the data center operator community, community really focus on those things. And it goes to your point. It's, you know, the, the, the people that are behind what we're doing and, and are we, uh, you know, connecting with our customers in a way that makes them feel valued and, and that we understand what their needs are. Well, I think, I think you're, just to play on that yeah. a little bit more, because um, because the offering is, um, there's, there's, there's a lot of choices in the market, right? Yep. There's a lot of choice in the market. So, uh, and and if, if you get feedback on why you win a deal or even why you lose sure. a deal, um, you realize that a lot of these things are just very tiny yeah. things in the margins, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, yeah. And so if you can be easy to do business with, yeah. that can be that can be enough to to tilt a deal sure. in your favor. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you know, one of if you, if you come to the Sabi campus in Ashburn, one of the things that you'll see is the difference in uh, the first building that was bit, built here, and then the building that we're in now, which is um, significantly um, larger scale. Mm -hmm. And so, um, talk about just kind of that transition of of going from the the traditional model, which you know I think Sabi's delivered the that original model in other markets, yep. uh, to now building what you're you're building and and the flexibility that that provides customers. Right. Um, talk about that and and um, and what that process has been like. Sure. I think. Um, it, it really goes to something that uh, that we were talking about earlier and just how the scale of the market has just erupted, right? When we built that building, um, you know, four 1.8 megawatt data halls, mm -hmm. um, that was what, that's what the market was asking for, bet, right? Um, and so, you know, we've got a, um, a terrific customer who's leased out half that data center over there, uh, you know, a, a, a big cloud provider. Uh, and, um, but as the market changed, 
uh, you know, very, very rapidly, 1.8 megawatts was just not what people were looking for anymore. Sure. They were looking for 3.7 you know, or 3.6. And, um, uh, and so that, in between the time we started leasing out that building sure. and building this building, yeah. that, that sort of change yep. happened in the marketplace. So that's what we wanted to, to make sure we accommodated yep. here. So, you know, the, the data center across the street is going to be, we're kind of rounding that out now with, um, you know, some turnkey retail, but mostly wholesale and enterprise. Sure. Um, and we can certainly do that over here. The design gives us the flexibility to carve out, you know, carve up these data halls if we need to. But now we can put somebody into a full 5.8 5 megawatt quad sure. if they want that much, you know, that much capacity. And I think, you know, that's, again, that's just us responding to the market. Yeah. Because we've been seeing people saying, you know, I mean, you hear, you know, you talk to your compatriots and sure. colleagues in the market and you hear, you know, three, three megawatts isn't a big enough data hall yeah. anymore. And if I've got to put them in two, three megawatt data halls, I'm going to lose this deal. Sure. So we're trying to make sure we have that flexibility in this building so that we don't, we don't run into that where, where we, we can't give them enough contiguous space to keep them happy and to meet their requirements. Yeah, and one of the other um, ways you all have listened to your clients has been on the build-to-suit side of things. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably the advantage of being uh, uh, having some flexibility in the way that you operate and the way that you do deals. Talk about your ability to build and deliver build-to-suit solutions for certain sizes of, of clients that, that actually have that need? What the, what's that process been like? Sure. Well, I think we, we benefit uh, quite a bit from you know, the, the ties with Savy Construction, right? Okay. Um, and Talk so, about that a little bit. What's that, uh, you know, for those that don't know, what's that partnership like? Sure. So, uh, so Savy Construction was really the, was the first company sure. um, under the Savy umbrella. And um, they've been building data centers since the 70s. Sure, you bet. Um, so a lot of experience there. And then uh, when the company decided to get into the development, ownership, and, and operation of data centers in the, in the early 2000s, we've got this partnership with Savy sure. Construction. So, so they help us uh, drive things. Uh, very, obviously, a great relationship between the two you companies. Um, and that helps us on the build a suit side as well, because we can flex, we can move, we can adapt to what the customer requirements are. Um, we did something really interesting not too long ago. Uh, we had a customer, um, and we had designed a space for uh, it was about 7.2 megawatts uh -huh. of uh, critical load uh -huh. in this space, and uh, tier three, you know, and sure. plus one yep. and currently maintainable. Um, well, this this prospective customer at the time came to us and said, "Well, um, that's great, but I need I need 10 megawatts of space or 10 megawatts of power." Yeah. Um, and I only need a certain portion of it to be tier three for my mission critical applications, but I've got a large lab environment. Interesting. Uh, and uh, so I only need tier one in that. I only yeah, need lower redundancy. Yeah. Uh, and they said, and I don't, you know, and I know, I know what I should be paying for n, and what I should be paying for n plus one. And so, um, and so, can you can you work with me on that? Because I don't want to buy ten megawatts of n plus one if I don't need that. There, you know, buyers are getting more and more sophisticated these days and mm. understanding how. Um, you know, how they should be consuming yeah. data center space. Yes. So because we have that flexibility and we were able to do a build to suit, we're in that same amount of space. We, d we did deliver to them 10 megawatts of capacity, and it's a mix of the tier three that they needed for the mission critical production applications and then tier one for uh, the lab environment. And it's, it's both, of, both of which are priced appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. You you said buyers are getting more sophisticated, which is a really uh, great comment around you know some of the maturity that's taken place in the market. One of the areas that I've seen them become more mature or want to become more mature is around connectivity mm -hmm. and their network and how they're how they're utilizing uh, their infrastructure from a connectivity standpoint to really benefit their business. How do you all or how does Sabi approach that? Uh, from just from a connectivity perspective and in thinking through like a hey, designing of facilities and and what we offer to make sure that you can meet their needs not just today but also tomorrow right so I think um, it, it all kind of starts off with site selection right mm -hmm. you, you have to look and try to figure out uh, you know where is it an environment that's either already got you know terrific fiber assets in mm -hmm. the ground mm -hmm. or what might help drive uh, additional providers to build out in yes. the area, right? So 
you know, when we went out to Quincy, Washington, um, you know, we were the first co-location provider out there. Yahoo and Microsoft were, were already out there, if I, if I remember the history correctly. So we, we knew that, okay, we're going to be able to get more providers to come into the area because you've, you've got those two massive companies out there. Um, you know, this, this uh, piece of land, for example, you know, again, we bought this. Um, with the, the fiber connectivity in mind because the fiber routes that run right outside, you know, right off the property. So we knew it would be easy for any provider to be able to, to build in, yep. you know, at, at less cost for them. Yes. Um, and I think another thing that, we're, that we, you know, have been trying to do more and more is, um, you know, you want to be, you want to be talking collaborat collaboratively with the end user, with the connectivity provider, uh, and then us, the data center developer, up front as early as possible yeah. as you can. Yeah. Um, because people, you know, love to complain about provisioning times with, you know, sure. with connectivity and circuits. And um, but if you if you if you're giving people ample lead time, if you're telling them, hey, we're you know we're we're in advance talks, and you know you get confidentiality agreements, sure. everything, yeah. so everybody's comfortable. Yeah. But you get people sitting down around a table and talking so that they know, hey, if I spend the money to build into this. There's going to be somebody passing significant amounts, significant amounts of traffic. They're going to, you know, allow me to start generating, you know, revenue and cash flow off of this infrastructure yes. investment that I've made into the facility. So I think, you know, site selection, making sure that you're in a place where the connectivity provider can make those investments um, uh, without, um, uh, you know, a tremendous amount of expense, yeah. right? And then also trying to work collaboratively with them as early as possible as you can in the process, so that they don't feel like, you know, they're, they're hearing at the last minute and you got to build in immediately and, you know, and, and, and then they really feel under the gun. Yeah. The, you know, the, the data center industry uses obviously so much power to, to do what it is that we're doing from a, you know, uh, uh, powering the world's digital infrastructure um, that, you know, there's, there's a lot of focus today on renewable energy. Mm -hmm. on how to, um, you know, from a sustainability perspective and how to be good um, corporate citizens uh, from energy usage, water usage. But from an energy efficiency side of things, what are some of the things that Savy is doing to make sure that, you know, they're helping their customers meet their goals as well? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you're right. So you see so much these days, you know, when, whenever bid documents come out, it's, you know, tell me about your lead certifications. Yeah. Tell me about... You know, your other energy efficiency or sustainability, your green initiatives. Um, so it is starting to, again, you know, in a business where you're co really competing at the margins, those kind of things make a critical difference. Sure. Um, and so, uh, you know, depending on the market, I think it goes back to, uh, you know, what I was saying earlier about connectivity. It goes down to site selection, mm -hmm. right? So what, are the, what options are going to be available to me as the yes. data center developer to then pass on to my customers. So I think, you know, what you'll what you'll see a lot with with Savy in terms of our greenfield development, um, I think you're going to see us looking for areas where we can get access to low cost, mm -hmm. uh, renewable power um, that allows us to be a good a good steward of the environment, yeah. um, but also drive down PUEs and costs for our customers to give them a fantastic. Um, uh, you know, economic package, yeah. right? While also, uh, again, allowing them to be to be a good steward of the environment. So for us, you know, that's going to be that's going to be looking for sites uh, around hydropower. We really like yeah, hydropower, sure. hundred yeah. percent renewable. Um, and you know, in, out in Quincy and some other locations, we're looking at industry low in terms of cents per kilowatt hour. So that yeah. can, that can then get passed on to the end user. Love it. So we talk a lot about business leadership. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that I'm, you know, really interested in. And obviously, we have a uh, smaller organization, but just really trying to focus on how to best lead our teams well, produce great work, be in a culture that we love to be in. I'm just wondering, from your perspective, and being in the business world, being in the data center industry for a long time, what are some key like leadership principles or key things that have helped guide you? From a career perspective, I mean, are there things that you can think back on and say, "Hey, these are really the things that I've tried to, um, you know, you that I've used to guide my business career mm -hmm. from a leadership?" Yeah, career. you bet. Um, well, it's interesting. I, 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 I wasn't sure where you're going to go with this question yeah. because if you want to talk about leadership in the data center industry, the you know, the president of Savvy Data Centers is uh, he's one of the big reasons that I joined. Interesting. Tell me about that. Why? So. Um, 
So if you've ever sat down and talked to Rob Rob, yeah, but I mean, he's, uh, he's a tremendous leader. Um, he's, uh, you know, what I would call sort of a quiet leader, okay. right? He's not um, boisterous and out yeah. front and, and beating the drum. But I think, uh, you know, Rob really, um, he really hews to the notion of, of accountability, uh, but starts with himself. Yeah. Uh, and um, this is a saying I heard a long time ago, but I think it applies to Rob, is that it's amazing what you can accomplish when no one cares who gets the credit. Yeah. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, I don't know if Rob's even familiar with that saying, but yeah. uh, I, I would think that most people who know him would, would say that he, he, he hews to that, whether yeah. knowingly or not. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think building teams and, and getting people together, I think that's just, that's just one of the most key things, right? If things start to, things start to break down when people start worrying about, well, you know, who's going to get credit sure. for this and how is this going to reflect on me? And, yes. Um, and I, and so I think you know, just off the top of my head, that's one of the things yeah. I'd say is that it's amazing what a team can accomplish when nobody cares who gets the credit. Yeah, that's great. In fact, a buddy of mine, um, coaches high school basketball one of the things that he said he's been trying to help his kids understand you get five kids on the floor and that's their mentality how far they can go versus three that's that 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 is their mentality and, and another that is worried about how his stats look or another that's worried about what his parents might think of him and so that's really the message he's been you know preaching to you know his, his basketball team so it's interesting to see how that carries over into you know the business world, and it is right. very true. Um, okay, from a personal side of things, we just talked about this, but you do CrossFit, which I which I think just is awesome. Started. Just yep. started. Okay, tell me about your experience with that and what you've liked about it. Uh, so I started uh, really in February. Okay, uh, and so now here in Ashburn or where? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. There's actually two good options, uh, okay. uh, at there least uh, maybe more. Okay, um, that's good. So if you ever want to come up again, okay, again, sure. Out, there you know. we go. Yes. Um, we'll film that. But no, uh, we won't. <laughs> but uh, no, I um, I had a friend who got into it down yeah. in North Carolina years ago. Okay, um, and really transformed his life. Yeah, I mean, sure. He's, yeah. he's uh, uh, you know, a big adherent. And so um, I just, you know, I've, I've been active all my life, but yeah. I've just found it kind of, it would, it would wax and wane, you know, uh, and just going to work out on my own. I just, there were so many times where I'd be like, oh, I can work during lunch sure. or I can, uh, or I'll go after work and then nah, I need to get home yeah. to the family. Um, so when I joined CrossFit, I mean, the, the thing that, the, the things that, that, that have, I guess, I've found most attractive. And, and one of them, I think CrossFit it, uh, doesn't advertise nearly enough. Yeah. So first, the one we do advertise well is, is community and camaraderie. Sure. Yeah. Right? I mean, you get in there and, and it's with, I mean, you're, you're going through hell with, yeah. with uh, you know, people. You're all doing it sure. together, right? And so, you know, and people will look at you. And if it's, a, you know, one of these... Um, Sort of trademark workouts. People ask, "Oh, is it your first time through this workout?" And you know, and they'll remember their first time. Yeah. And so the, there's this great community and camaraderie yeah. that builds. Um, the second thing, and the thing that I don't think we talk about enough, is that everything can be scaled. Yeah, sure. To any level of yeah. ability, to yeah. any age, to any physical limitation. Yeah. Um, because too many people, including me for a long time, stayed away from it thinking, well, you know, I don't know how to do these Olympic sure. lifts and I can't do strict pull-ups. Yeah. And, and so I think, um, I was at a class, uh, a couple months ago and there were only three of us showed up. It was the, the last class of the night. Yeah. Um, and it was, uh, one of the real, you know, young guns in the, in the gym who's fantastic and works out all the time. Then there was me who was, you know, maybe slightly past beginner, mm -hmm. um, and then there was one uh, older gentleman who's yeah. probably in his in his seventies, um, and we all did the same workout. Now we all scaled sure. differently, yeah. um, but we all essentially did the same workout and got a great workout. And I, 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 awesome. I, I thought about it later that we should have taken a picture that night. Yeah. It would have been a perfect advertisement sure. for for that that scalability that you know that we use that term in the data center world too. But <laughs> there we go. But, um, yeah. But the, the, the scalability of CrossFit, because I don't think it's talked about. Yeah, it is. I, I think it's got the, the, you know, people probably look from afar and, and think that. You well, to see the games yeah, on TV, no that's all that. they think. And, yes, and know? that's like. And one, I did too. One percent or, you know, point zero something percent of the people that are actually doing it. Yeah. Um, okay, so when you think about the data center industry as a whole, uh, you know, what gets you excited about the next, you know, five years? I mean, wh where do you think the industry will be? And. 
You've, uh, you're obviously deep in it. Why do you get excited about continuing on in this space? Well, you know, from an industry perspective in general, it's, it's just hard to see where the top is, right? I, mean, yeah. I think it'll change it, the, way it's, the way it changed from our building across the street to here, yeah. just a couple of years in terms of scale. But, but just given uh, you know, the facts that you hear about how much data we consume now yeah. is more than somebody in, you know, in, in five minutes sure. is more than somebody in their lifetime yeah. in the 1700s or something. So it's just hard to see how any of that goes away. And it's hard to see how that, how that uh, you know, mitigates the need for, for more data center space. So I, I think that the you know, industry itself is just going to keep growing. Um, yes. And then you know, what gets me excited, though, is, is really the reason I joined SAVI. You know, there's a lot of great data center companies out there. What attracted me to Savy was where this company is in its growth cycle, mm -hmm. uh, in the phase of its development. Um, and I think you, know, you, you, you take a, a platform that is phenomenal, that's well respected in the uh, data center industry, yeah. um, already established by Coastal, you know, um, and the, the chance to be part of the team that's gonna make it even bigger and better than it yeah. already is. It sounds, it sounds kind of cheesy, but, yeah. But that's that's what excited me about yeah. the opportunity to come over here and be part of a team that was working to do that. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for you know taking the time to sit down with us and Absolutely. letting us be here, tour the facility. It's a phenomenal uh, build, and I'm excited to see over the next several years how it will play out. So, well, hopefully, the next time you're here, we've got a few of these data halls filled. There we go. Well, anyway, if you want to find out more about Savy, you can check them out at SaveyDataCenters.com. All of our content is at DataCenterHawk.com and on YouTube, and you can check it out there. John, thanks again. Thank you.